Good morning. Happy Mother. Good morning. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> a couple announcements. I want to thank everyone for the groceries that they brought in for Samaritan House. We had over $1,200 worth of groceries, so they're very appreciative of that. Next Sunday is Bring Your Bible to, to Church, and there'll be a potluck after if you want to bring a dish to pass. June 8th and 9th, we're celebrating all the graduates. So if you have pictures, bios on what they're going to be doing, send it to the church office, and we're going to put it on the screen on that Sunday. And we're still taking donations for technology. We still need some stuff we need to do. So may the peace of the Lord be with you all. Please share the peace. We're going to start with What a Fellowship, hymn number 780 in the Blue Book. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Gracious and glorious God, you have chosen us as your own, and by the powerful name of Christ, 
you protect us from evil. By your spirit, transform us and your beloved world that we may find our joy in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Our choir anthem today includes the phrase, Here I raise my Ebenezer. And that's a reference to 1 Samuel chapter 7, after the Israelites defeated um, the Philistines, uh, Samuel raised a stone monument uh, that he called Ebenezer to commemorate that and memorialize it. And in our anthem, the person says, I raise my Ebenezer because God has helped him to get to where he is and he wants more help to learn how to sing God's praise and more help to be steadfast because his heart tends to wander. And if you'd like, I invite you to read First Samuel from verses one up of chapter one through chapter seven if you want more of the story. any of the youth would like to come up now for the youth message?
Good morning. Hello. Are y'all there? Awake this morning? Wow. Thanks for coming up. Do you remember me? I did this once before. I remember all of you. It's very special that you can come up. Do you know what day it is today? I know. Isn't that amazing? Mom gets a special day just for her. Do y'all have a mom? Yeah. Is yours the best mom in the whole wide world? All of you have the best mom? Well, whose mom is better? Yours. <laughs> I think God gives us the best moms, and he kind of picks them out so that you're the best kid, right? Maybe, sometimes, yeah. So, what's mom's job? Oh, does mom, does mom cook? Yeah, so she's a cook, right? She's a, she does the laundry, so she's a laundress. And does she clean? Oh man, she's a housekeeper. And does she teach you stuff? She's a teacher. Wow. How did she get to be so smart? I know. She went to school. Good answer, yeah. But what's mom's, what's mom's best job? What's her favorite job in the whole wide world? You've got it, taking care of you. Do you think mom smiles every time she sees you? Yeah, yeah she does, because you're all so darn cute. What about when you're not so cute? When you do something that's a little um, not the best, like had three cookies instead of just one. Do you think mom still loves you? Yeah, she does. Did you know that moms have a special gift? Moms can tell when you're telling the truth. Oh, yeah, y'all laughing at that. That's the truth. And mom can tell. Sometimes they have super hearing, too. You think you're whispering and you're getting away with it, but we've heard mom can hear that, too, right? Yeah. But she still loves you, right? Yeah. So... I'm going to tell you a story about a friend of mine. Because sometimes mothering is a little different than being a mother. So you can have that love for other people, even if they're not your child, right? We know God loves us, right? We're God's children, right? But sometimes people come into our lives that are very special friends. So I had this very special friend, her name was Loretta, and Loretta was only this tall. She was very, very short. And Loretta liked to help kids. So Loretta used to gather teddy bears and stuffed animals, and she donated them to kids. So one day, Loretta got some bears in, and there was This little, not a bear, right? She's kind of a, what do you think she is? She looks like a fairy, yeah, kind of a fairy. And she said, well, her head's kind of limpy and her wings don't stand up, but I really like her, so I think she's gonna stay at my house. So she named her Sparkle. You think you know why she named her Sparkle? She named her Sparkle and she said, Sparkle's just gonna sit on my couch, sit by my sewing machine, sit in the window. So every time I went to see Loretta, she would, Sparkle was there. So even though Loretta was older than me, way older than me, 10 years older than me, really old, she would say when we were getting ready to leave, ah, I made you some cookies. I made you, I've made you a lunch to take home. Now, she was a whole hour away, but in case we got hungry, Loretta packed us a lunch to go home. So she was kind of mothering, even though she wasn't our mother, right? But she was a good friend. So what can we do for mom? What can we do that's really special for mom? We can be extra good. 
Yeah, we can be extra cute, right? Y'all know how to do that. What? Oh, she watches a movie with you? Wow, that's very special. What about if we say to mom, mom, that was the greatest breakfast. Is that a gift? It is, yeah. It's a word gift, right? When we go off to school, we say, see you, mom, I love you. Do you think mom goes, oh, they're so cute. I just love when they say that, right? Yeah. And then mom has another special job. She's going to teach you about what? Right here. Right here. She's going to teach you about Jesus. She's going to teach you about being God's child. And next week, you're all going to get a Bible. Wow, that's going to be exciting, right? You guys don't look very happy today. Are you all happy? (laughs) So what we're going to do today is we're going to try three times to say to mom, you're the best mom. I love you. Happy Mother's Day. Can we practice it? One, two, three. You're the best mom. I love you. Happy Mother's Day. Okay, cool. Shall we pray? Dear Lord, we are so grateful for all the wonderful moms that we have. We thank you for giving us the gift of a great mom. We'll try to be better kids, even if we're older kids. And we thank you for this glorious day. Amen. So when you leave today, I want you to all wave and say Happy Mother's Day to all the moms here. Can you do that on the way to Sunday school? Okay. Thank you for coming up. Almost forgot, have to put on my other hat. Our first reading is from Proverbs 6. My child, keep your father's commandment, and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Bind them upon your heart always. Tie them around your neck. When you walk, they will lead you. When you lie down, they will watch over you. And when you awake, they will talk with you. The word of the Lord. We'll now read responsively from Psalm 113. Who is like the Lord our God, who is seated on high? He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap. He gives a barren woman a home, making her the joyous mother of children. Praise the Lord. Our second reading is from Isaiah chapter 40. Had you not known, had you not heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youths shall faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with the wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The word of the Lord. A scripture reading this morning from Proverbs 31 verses 25 to 31. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she laughs at the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her happy, her husband too, and he praises her. 
Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful, and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a share in the fruit of her hands, and let her works praise her in the city gates. You can be seated. The sermon today is on Mother's Day, which began in May 12, 1907, when Anna Jarvis held the memorial service in West Virginia in honor of her late mother. She continued her fight to make it a national holiday and succeeded in 1914 when it became official. But later she denounced the holiday because it was too commercialized and she spent the latter part of her life trying to remove it from the calendar. In many homes, Mother's Day will begin with breakfast in bed for mom, flowers, cards, and family gatherings all to celebrate her. The Bible consistently tells us to honor and love our mom. In Exodus 20, verse 12, the Bible tells us to honor your father and your mother so that you may live long in the land your Lord God is giving you. In Isaiah 66, verse 13, Jesus tells us, as a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. This morning, I'd like to tell you about a few women in the Bible who wanted to be mothers. Eve is the mother of all living. She was the living embodiment of humanity's glory. God had saved the best for last. She was undefiled by any evil, unblemished by any disease or defect. She was perfect in every way. Eve was grace, charm, intelligence, and pure innocence. God created Eve from Adam's rib, his intellectual co-equal, and in every sense, his perfect mate. The circumstances of Eve's creation illustrates how deep and meaningful the marriage of husband and wife is designed to be. It is not merely a physical union, but a union of heart and soul as well. Even though Adam and Eve were equal in God's eyes, there were differences. Adam was created first. He was the head, designed to be father, provider, protector, and leader. Eve was designed to be a mother, comforter, nurturer, and helper. When Satan deceived Eve, thinking eating the fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil was okay, and she offered it to Adam, this is known as the doctrine of original sin. Adam was blamed because he was head of the original family and of the human race. God punished them both. Eve's punishment was she would experience extreme pain with childbirth and suffering. Later, when Cain and Abel were born, Eve saw them as tokens of God's goodness and reminders of the promise that her seed would be the destroyer of the tempter. After Cain, and A Cain killed Abel and the birth of Seth, she felt Seth would be the one to fulfill that promise. Mothers are caregivers of the world. They nurture their children, teach them right from wrong, and educate them about God. If you had a mother like I did, she fed you, taught you, disciplined you. Unless you did something really bad, then it was wait till your father gets home. And she made sure you had clothes on your back. <clears throat> You attend church every Sunday, whether you wanted to or not. Coming from a family with seven brothers and sisters, I know things were tight, but we always had food on the table. I lost my mom during COVID in 2020, just before Mother's Day. I felt bad because I could not be there for her in the end as she had been all my life. You still want that support and guidance from your parents to know that someone was always there for you whether right or wrong, they would always love you. For many of us who have lost their mom, it's a bittersweet day, thinking back on all the good times we had, watching other families celebrate the day can sometimes be a sad day for many. If you have lost your mom, take the time to write her a letter and share memories of your mom with your siblings and friends. She will always be with you in your heart. Another mother in the Bible is Sarah, wife of Abraham, who so wanted a child but could not conceive. God made a covenant with Abraham and told him to leave the country. 
So they made their way to Canaan. <clears throat> God had promised Abraham would be the father of a great nation. After many years of being nomads and Sarah was still childless, she encouraged her husband to take Hagar, their servant, as a second wife so she could have children to care for. Sarah wanted to be the matriarch of that great nation, <clears throat> so she figured she could raise Hagar's child as her own. After 24 years of living in Canaan and yet another child born to Hagar, Sarah was almost shattered. She remained without child. When God came to Abraham again with the promise, he would make him extremely fruitful. Finally, at the old age of 90, Sarah was with child and named him Isaac. Sarah never wavered in her faith that God would one day provide her with a child. <clears throat> Ruth's story began near the end of the era of the judges in the Old Testament. She was a widow and a foreigner who went to live in a strange land. Tragic circumstances reduced her to poverty. She was not only an outcast and an exile, she also didn't have any resources. After Ruth lost her husband, Malon, she left Moab with her widowed mother-in-law, Naomi, due to the famine. They traveled to Israel, where Naomi had family. Since neither one had any money, Ruth went to work in the fields, gleaning what the harvesters left behind in order to provide enough grain to eke out an existence. Biblical law established this as a means by which the most destitute in Israel could always earn a living. By circumstance, Ruth was gleaning in the field of Boaz, a very rich man, brother-in-law to Naomi, who immediately took a liking to Ruth once he realized she was a relative by marriage. She worked from the morning to dusk and ended with a full half bushel to last her and Naomi, her and Naomi about five days. Once Naomi heard whose field Ruth was working in, and he had taken a liking to her, she advised Ruth to propose marriage to Boaz. Boaz accepted and went right to Naomi's next of kin and ne negotiated for the right to Ruth's goal. In Hebrew, goal is translated one of our close relatives. It's a technical term that means much more than kinship or a relative who comes to the rescue. Once people in the town heard the news, they pronounced a blessing on Boaz and his bride-to-be. Boaz and Ruth were married, and the Lord soon blessed them with a son who they called Obed. He is the father of Jesse, the father of David. So Ruth was David's great-grandmother. Ruth, an ill-fated Mobit woman who was destitute, became mother in the royal line that would eventually produce that nation's first great king. Hannah, whose name means grace. It's a fitting designation for a woman whose life was crowned with grace and who became a living emblem of grace of motherhood. Hannah was married to Elkna, a bigamist, who was also married to Pinna, who had children. She deliberately provoked Hannah about the fact the Lord withheld children from her. Like Sarah, Hannah was distraught, thinking she would never have a child. Her prayers were finally answered with the birth of her son Samuel, who became one of the last of the judges and also a priest. Samuel was a towering figure in Israel's history, so Hannah's life often mirrored the original matriarch Sarah. Most of all, she mirrored Sarah's faith and perseverance. Hannah was so grateful the Lord gave her son. No mother was ever more devoted to home and child. Hannah understood how vital the early years are when their personalities are being formed. She prepared Samuel for a lifetime of service to God and gave him to the Lord to serve in the tabernacle when he was very young. She understood motherhood is the highest calling God can bestow on any woman. Honor and eminence for women in the Bible was near as always closely associated with home and family. Hannah understood that and earnestly desired to be the noble role of a mother. Hannah's love for her husband is the first key to understanding her profound influence as a mother. 
The most important characteristic of a godly mother is not her relationship with her children. It is her love for her husband. The love between husband and wife is the real key to a thriving family. What you communicate to your children through your marital relationship will stay with them for the rest of their lives. By watching how mother and father treat one another, they will learn the most fundamental lessons of life, love, self-sacrifice, integrity, sympathy, compassion, understanding, and forgiveness. Hannah had an abiding love for God. Her spiritual passion was seen in her prayer life. She was a devout woman whose affections were set on heavenly things, not on earthly things. She believed children were inheritance from the Lord. Hannah was blessed with five more children, three sons and two daughters. Of all the extraordinary women in scripture, one stands out above all others as the most blessed, most highly favored by God. Mary was chosen to be the singular instrument through which he would at last bring the Messiah into the world. She was a descendant of Ruth and Sarah. She was descended from David. Some religions have elevated her to godlike status. I remember hearing a story of a grilled cheese sandwich sold for some ridiculous amount because the burn marks on the toast looked like the image of Mary. Mary's first introduced in the Bible in Luke's Gospel, where the angel Gabriel appears to her to tell her she would conceive a child of the Son of the Highest. She never questions how this would happen since she's a virgin. Some say she was chosen because of her faith. Augustine said that Mary first conceived Christ in her heart by faith before she was conceived in the womb. Mary was an ardent follower and dis disciple of Jesus. Jesus treated women differently than the rabbis who would not speak to a woman in public. Jesus treated women with respect. He didn't treat them as second-class citizens, but a people worthy of appreciation and respect. You will find Jesus talking to the Samaritan woman with Mary Magdalene and Mary and Martha. In the midst of being publicly tortured to death on the cross, he paused to honor his mother. His last thoughts were of his mother standing there watching. When he saw her, he said, Woman, behold your son. Then to John, his disciple, he said, Behold your mother. John would look after his mother after his death. These are just a couple examples of strong, courageous prayer for a woman that put their faith and trust in God to get them through when tough times were tough. Whenever thoughts of my mom come to mind, I always think of the last few years visiting with her and remember her laughter, her smile, and walking down the hall with her at the nursing home, singing one of her favorite songs, Home on the Range. It brings it all back to me, and she's right by my side again. Here's a little verse that Jan gave me. Your mother is always with you. She's the whisper of the leaves as you walk down the street. She's the smell of bleach on your freshly laundered clothes. She's the cool hand on your brow when you're not well. Your mother lives inside your laughter. She's crystallized in every tear. She's the drop you place. She's the place you come from, your first home, and she's the map you follow with every step you take. She's your first love and your first heartbreak, and nothing on earth can separate you. Amen.
risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. You may be seated. In addition to the names on the screen, I'll now take names from the congregation you'd like lifted up in prayer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I'd like to lift up Mike Ayers. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. You sanctify us in your truth. Your word is truth. Send your church out into the world to spread your love and joy. Embolden all bishops, pastors, and deacons to be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. God of grace. Your creation groans under the strain of pollution. Preserve melting glaciers and dwindling forests. Bolster those who work for climate justice and help us all to be good and faithful stewards of your creation. God of grace. Your people seek wisdom, understanding, and peace. Guide all those who govern and inspire them to work on behalf of the most vulnerable in our midst. Keep safe first responders, those serving in the military, and those whose duty it is to protect others. God of grace. Your children need your loving care. Protect them from all harm. Comfort those in any affliction, especially those on our prayer list. The names mentioned aloud, and those dear in our hearts. Support those who grieve and bring solace to those near death. God of grace. Your spirit lives within us here. Inspire the work of this congregation and unite us as one. Bless all the mothers in our midst. Console those for whom this day is difficult and gather us under the care of your loving wings. God of grace. Your saints dwell with you in light. Keep us ever thankful for those who have gone before us in faith. Inspire us by their witness. God of grace. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. Please stand as you're able. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Heavenly Holy Father, through Christ our Lord. Sharing our life, he lived among us to reveal your glory and love, that our darkness should give way to his own brilliant light. And so with the church and earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join the un unending hymn. is betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, 
This is my body given for you. Do this for remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Join me in the prayer the Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, as we forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The banquet is ready. Come and take your place at the feast.
shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The God of the resurrection, power, the Christ of ending joy, and the spirit of the Easter hope, bless you now and always. Amen. Please join us in singing Joyful, Joyful, We Adore You, hymn 551. Mm -hmm. 